Well, hey there, YouTube. How are you? It's Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA. I am here today to share with you a really beautiful vanity makeover. This is actually a desk and I picked it up for free. I know the furniture fairies, they bless me. Somebody that knows that I paint furniture said, hey, I've got a piece that you might want to do a little TLC on. And this is what we're going to paint today. So this is real life. This is, this is puppies, this is messy, and this is me. <laughs> this is what I work with in my dining room studio like every day. Look, she just sat directly on my lap. Do you want to be in the video today? This is Stella and this is Luna. These are my, uh, these are my boxer babies. <laughs> so please bear with me while we do this and they're going to join us because you know, hey, puppies have power. Maybe I'll get more likes and views on this video. So I kind of struggled with what I should paint this little beauty. It sat here in the dining room for a couple days. It wasn't speaking to me. I know that I'm going to add some would you bend to the front of the molding, like right here on this piece. And I know I can stain the top. I really like to use gel stain when I stain the top of my pieces because I find that it's a really durable way to add a wonderful finish to your furniture when you're refinishing and painting things. Like I said, real life puppies, puppies in the way of all of the things. But what did we choose for a color? I'm going to show you. So after some heavy duty thought and wondering what is going to happen on this piece, I knew the dark stain, I knew gold, <laughs> and actually I decided to choose one of the new silk paint colors. Did you hear that Dixie Belle has released 10 brand new silk paint colors? They're really pretty, they're desert inspired, they're bold and they're rich. So are you excited Stella? You want to see what I've got here today? <laughs> I'm going to go with green. We're going to do a little bit of green on this piece. Green, gold, possibly some stripes definitely a stencil, and maybe even a transfer. Let's hang out and play with some paint. As always, I start by inspecting my piece and making sure that all the drawers are sturdy and well joined. Go ahead and make any necessary repairs, clean with white lightning or pristine clean. Make sure to rinse with water. So after my inspection was complete, I noticed that a couple of the drawer joints really needed to be re-glued and then clamped together. So I went ahead, used my wood glue, clamped the drawers and let them dry before I started painting. I think that it's really important to take the extra time to get in there and glue and screw the joints as necessary, remove any broken pieces of trim, and then use your Big Mama's butter to lubricate your drawer slides. So if you notice when I was repairing the drawers, the sides of the piece needed a little TLC. I wasn't comfortable with them being just plain wood, so I came in with my terracotta chalk mineral paint and painted the sides of the drawers. I also had to remove some decorative trim on the bottom because it was broken on the sides and just didn't look right. So I wanted a kind of 90s vibe to this piece, and part of 90s for me is mixing certain color combinations. So the choice of Midnight Green and then the Terracotta works really well together for that pop of color. I had some random pieces of transfer left over from the Tropical Leaves transfer, so I decided to cut that up and add that little bit of color to the sides of the drawer. Transfers are really easy to use. Dixie Bell carries multiple different kinds of transfers under the Bells and Whistles line. All you need to do is peel off that white backing paper. It's the protective paper for your transfer. The back side of the transfer is sticky and the front side is smooth. I cut out the image that I would like to use and then push it down onto the piece. After I've done that, I use my small burnishing tool to make sure the edges are adhered. So I added the Tropical Leaves Transfer to all the drawer sides on the piece. I think it's a great way to add that extra little touch when somebody opens the drawer and sees the color on the inside. I also then came in with my clear coat to seal the transfers down before I was finished. 
So one more thing that I want you to do on the inside of your drawers if needed. The inside of these drawers were just not pretty. I could have taken the terracotta paint and brought it around the top and put it on the inside, but I thought that using the tiles decoupage paper from the bells and whistle line would be a lot easier. I cut the paper to size for the interior part of the drawer and then used my tacky spray to make sure the bottom of the drawer would be sticky. I then just stuck that decoupage paper in and I was finished. The drawers look a million times better. Finally, time for the fun stuff, right? Prep always takes the longest, but it's totally worth it. Let's add our Midnight Green Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint. Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint is amazing for pieces like this. You saw at the beginning of the video when I was cleaning all of the tannins that were coming through the wood. This paint has a built-in primer and a built-in top coat. I'm not gonna have any bleed through when using Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint. Silk paint is self-leveling, but I still like to use a smooth synthetic brush when I apply my paint. Here you can see me using a small artist brush to come in and get in close to those details. I like to call this part the teeth on the drawers. I like to fill it in and just add that extra little TLC when painting a piece. So the top two drawers, I wanted to add a little bit of a different flair to them, and that means stripes. I like to put stripes in my furniture and you'll see me do it often. I used white cap silk all-in-one mineral paint to cover the top two drawers entirely and when it's dry i'm going to come in and tape them off So while my drawers were drying, I came in and finished the rest of the desk. I did find a mirror to match to this piece and it's already gold, so it's gonna be a perfect combination. It's recommended to wait approximately two hours in between coats of silk all-in-one mineral paint. Let's finish the top of this piece. So since I'm gonna make this desk into a sort of vanity-like feel, I know that the top is probably gonna get a lot of use. This is where gel stain comes in as a number one favorite of mine. It's super durable and really easy to use. A couple of tools that'll make this job a little bit easier is using an applicator pad and wearing a glove. Since gel stain is oil-based, you're not gonna wanna reuse those pads. Once you use them, you can throw them away or get a t-shirt-like material to apply your gel stain. But don't wash them, they're gonna dry out and then you can put them in the trash. I'm going to need to apply two even coats of gel stain. I didn't sand the top of this piece, I just cleaned it with white lightning and then came in and applied the gel stain in kind of an even manner. I like to use nice smooth strokes when I'm applying this so that I can build those layers, cover the damages and make it look super great and shiny. So since this gel stain is an oil-based product, you need to be aware that dry times are going to vary. If you're applying this in, in the interior of your home, it might dry a little faster than if you were doing this outside, say like in a shed or a high humidity like area. It's gonna take a little while to dry. I like to wait at least 12 to 24 hours to make sure that that first coat is super duper dry before I come in and apply the second. Building up those layers of coverage with the no paint gel stain is going to cover all the damages that are on the top of this desk and I didn't have to do any sanding. Mm -hmm. 
So now it's the next day. My drawers are dry. I'm going to work on my gel stain. I came in with my blue painter's tape and decided to tape off some stripes. I'm going to use anchor silk paint so that when I'm done with this anchor and white cap silk paint, I'm finished with these drawers and I can leave it. I don't need to seal over top. So I use a small brush to come in and add that detail with a touch of gold digger around the edges. I then use the same gold digger to come in and paint the entire piece of would you bend molding. Would you bend moldings are kind of neat because you can paint them before you put them on the piece or after. I really want this one to pop, so I'm going to paint it in gold digger and apply it when I'm done painting my piece. So after I like waffled back and forth on what I wanted to do to these drawers, did I want to stencil, transfer, I went with leopard prints. You could also call them cheetah spots if you want. So even though this is hand painting, not a stencil or a design or a transfer, you can totally do this. This is not hard. All you need to do is start with your base part of your little cheetah print. So I added multiple different circles and ovals across the front of the piece. Using my artist brush from Dixie Bell, I just added the layers of Gold Digger until I built up the kind of varied look that I wanted. I didn't want them to be solid gold. I wanted a little bit of variation because it's an animal print. No animal print looks truly perfect. So here's my handy dandy tip of the day. If you think that this is gonna be hard for you, open up Pinterest, have a look at pictures of actual cheetah print. There's actually tutorials on Pinterest on how to paint these, but this is very easy to do. Come in with your anchor and then just kind of cover the edges of your spots. Don't make them all the same, switch them up, make them look different. I think you'll find that adding a little bit of hand painted detail like this to any piece is what's going to make your pieces stand out from everybody else's. Using the cheetah print to just kind of accent the front of those drawers makes the piece look amazing. I love it. It's totally Kate Spade inspired. I just find these color combinations really, really nice to look at. Since this little vanity has kind of like a maximalist feel, I needed to add a little bit more detail. Inside the vintage floral transfer, there are these beautiful black images. I wanted to use a couple of the roses and I applied them to the top part of the piece on the drawer. After I burnished the transfer down onto the top piece of the vanity, I then came in with my small gray finishing pad and kind of removed any edges that are remaining. Since it's now been a full 24 hours since I applied that first coat, I came in and added my second coat of no paint gel stain. I wanted to seal the top of this piece, making sure that it would have the extra strength that I need, you know, knowing it's gonna be a desk or a vanity, it's gonna get a lot of use. So when you seal your gel stain, you can use gator hide, satin clear coat. This just happens to be the extra coat from the silk line. I apply it with a blue sponge, but here's the ticket. Dampen your blue sponge a tiny bit before you start to apply your clear coat because it's gonna help it glide and eliminate any streaks or strokes that you might see.
Time to add the last little bit to the piece. This is the Woody Bend molding. Now when Woody Bend arrives to you in the package, it's really hard and rigid. You can't bend it and you need to heat it before you bend it or you will break it. So first things first, flip your Woody Bend over and use a heat gun to heat it up so it's nice and bendy. You're gonna make sure then that it's adhered flat to your piece. If it's bendy, this way you're gonna get a nice, tight, smooth surface, keeping it flat to your piece of furniture. You're going to want to use wood glue when you apply your Woody Bend to your piece of furniture. I made sure to cover the entire back part of the Woody Bend while it was warm with wood glue. I then stuck it onto my piece and used some blue painter's tape just to hold it steady while I got out my heat gun and heated it one more time to ensure that it's flat. If by chance any of the wood glue kind of seeps out around the edges, just dampen a paintbrush and remove that glue while it's still wet. It'll come right off, but this glue dries clear, so even if I had a tiny bit of excess, I'm not worried about it. Put all your hardware back on. I sprayed it gold, as you can see, and then you are ready to add your final details. Since this little vanity is painted in silk all-in-one mineral paint, it has a built-in top coat. I'm not going to seal on top of the work I've already done, but I did wanna add a little bit more detail and shading to the corners. Using my French tip, I came in with black wax and kind of put it in the corners and all the edges. I went around the wood you bend and around the base of the piece. Time to tidy up because I am a super messy painter. I do not put anything away when I'm painting. I leave everything on the floor. So this is kind of my like 15 minute shakedown where I clean up all the junk, sweep the floors and get ready for staging. Do you wanna know a top drawer RVA secret? You see all these papers that you're gonna see me put down on the floor on my staging area? They're book sheets that just cover stains on my staging floor, honestly. It works a charm. I paired the vanity with that beautiful gold mirror and it looks like a million bucks. I'm super happy with the way this came out. It's definitely got a maximalist kind of a Kate Spade feel. The stripes add that perfect touch of charm and those hand painted leopard prints are super cute. If you try this, I'd love it if you sent me a picture. I wanna see what you create. 